DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth Dealers, Coast to Coast, present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Groucho sent me to see the new DeSoto. Groucho sent me, and I love to drive this car. It's long and low and roomier, so handsome you can see. It's powerful, and I'm so glad that Groucho sent me. Listen to him when you hear Groucho say, Go drive the new DeSoto at DeSoto Plymouth Dealers today. And now, here he is, the one, the only... Groucho! I thought he went out with the old year. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, here I am again with $1,000 for one of our couples. And if any of them say the secret word, the duck will fly down and pay him $100. The word tonight is water. Okay, Donald, scram. <laughs> Go ahead with this thing, uh, George. All right, Groucho, we have a young married couple for you. Uh, me? Well... You mean for each other? Yes, the young married couple are Sergeant and Mrs. Sylvester Nelson. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome for the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Say the secret word, and you'll take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you'll find around the house. Sergeant Sylvester Nelson. That's I right, take sir. it you're a Marine, judging by the uniform. Is that right? That's right, sir. Uh -huh. Sir, you don't have to say sir to me. Just call me Colonel, that's all. <laughs> I'm kind of nutty anyhow. <laughs> With a name like Sylvester, I'm sure you must be a fighting Marine, eh? Oh, I sure am. They call me Ski, though, bro. You do, huh? What do you do from the Marines? Play in the band? No, I'm a Staff Sergeant of Machine Gun Platoon. Machine Gun? Uh, in that case, sir, you can, you can call me Groucho, eh? <laughs> uh, Mrs. Nelson, uh, that's, that's you, huh? What is your first name? My first name is Colette. Colette, oh, French, eh? Parlez-vous français? Oui, oui. Oh. <laughs> By the way, est-ce que vous avez vu des jolies filles à Paris pendant votre tour? I can. I'm going fishing in the morning. <laughs> Whereabouts in France uh, do you call home, uh, Colette? Well, I was born in Angoulême, but brought up in Bordeaux. Born where? Angoulême. Angoulême? Oui. Oui? No, I mean just you. <laughs> I don't know where he's born. I'll ask him later. Huh? Well, Colette, now that you're in America, what do you think of us in our ways? Uh, did you find us confusing when you first came here? Oh, we oui, uh, sometimes. But I think my worst experience was on a train ride from uh, New York to Wisconsin, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, Where'd you go, to Green Bay? Oui. I was expecting my first baby, and I was uh, traveling with Fifi. Who's Fifi? My French poodle. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't Fifi a comfort to you on the train? Poor little thing, no. She was pregnant, too. <laughs> Well, that shouldn't have upset you. I, uh, I once had a bath on a train myself. Eh? <laughs> That's a pretty old joke, uh, Colette, what I just said. Don't you think it's funny? I had a bath on a train. <laughs> Which joke? Didn't you hear the joke? I said, don't let it upset you. I once had a bath on a train. I had upper eight. I don't understand. Well, I don't think I can explain it to you. <laughs> Sylvester, why don't you explain it to him? Oh. Huh? Well, he was going to have a birth on the train. He had a birth. He was going to sleep. But you, you're going to give birth to a baby. And I mean, okay, okay. Hit to him. <laughs> explain the rest of it later, Sergeant. Uh, you know, in 40 years in show business, this is the lowest I've ever sunk. <laughs> when one contestant has to explain my jokes to another. <laughs> That's well, it's been a real education talking to you two, and I wish both of you success, children, and happiness. Yes. And if you ever see Fifi again, give him my love. Oh, she has got seven sets, Fifi. <laughs> well, give the whole eight of them my love. <laughs> now let's play You Bet Your Life. We start you off with $100. You try to increase that bankroll by answering any four questions in the category you picked yourselves. If you miss a question, you lose half of your bankroll. Is that clear, Colette? Oui. Oui, huh? Oui. You selected music, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you can start with a 10 or a 20 or 50, 80, all the way up to 100. Seven. Seven. 
Seventy dollars? Seventy. All right, in music, what is the mechanical device used to mark the exact tempo? Oh. <laughs> what is it in French? <laughs> you can see it, but you can What is it in Hungarian? <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It's a metronome. Metronome, oui. Oh, la, la. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Well, you, uh, you still have half your hundred dollars. What, what is ooh, la, la in French? <laughs> oh, <lady>. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, now don't get discouraged. Oh. You've got a long ways to go. You still have fifty dollars. Now, what are you going to try this time? Eighty. Eighty. All right, uh, A. Seymour Brown and Nat Ayer wrote a song back in 1911 that keeps popping up regularly. I'm sure you can identify it. Now, you listen. Okay, Jack. Beautiful doll. Oh, you beautiful doll is right. Uh, that is right. Absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, hi. <laughs> we now have $130. Now, what do you want to try? How many francs? 90. 90. According to the folk song, who wore sardine boxes minus topses in place of shoes? Oh, la la. Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. According to the folk song, this is, the, this is an old American song, and this is one of the lines in it. Who wore sardine boxes minus topses in place of shoes? Do you know, George? Yes, I think I do. Tell it to him. Uh, Clementine? My darling Clementine, that's right. You win $50, George. <laughs> huh? But unfortunately, you lost half your 130. You now have $65. All right, now here's your last chance to be the other couples, and don't be discouraged. Here we go, Maria. Uh, a hundred? That's the hard one. All right. There you go. Huh? The bigger the money, the harder the question, you know. Well, well, no. I don't want to well, alarm you. Hundred, go ahead. Hundred. What was the first name of the great Austrian composer, Mozart? What was his first name? Oh, I should know it. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Uh, well, la, it's, la, la, it's la, a ridiculous la. name. It's oh, Wolfgang. Oh, I would have never guessed it. No. <laughs> if you'd have thought of Leah of Errol Flynn, you'd have guessed it. Now, uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, you wind up with $32.50. Thanks and good luck from the DeSoto Plymouth dealer. Sorry you didn't win more. <laughs> Marilyn Pierce. Her partner is a special guest, one of the best-known uh, names in the world of golf, Mr. Jim Farrier. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, something you find around the house. Jim uh, Farrier, eh? Put it there, Jim. Right, sir. Glad to meet you. I'll get around to you in a minute, Jim. You practice your backswing, and I'll practice my approach. <laughs> Let's see, you're a Marilyn uh, Pierce? Where is your home uh, originally, Marilyn? Newport, Rhode Island. Newport? Oh, that's a pretty swanky place. I was thrown out of a hotel there once. <laughs> Did you have a job back in Newport? No, not in Newport. I uh, moved to Boston at an early age. Oh, Boston, And I uh, huh? was a model there. A model? Mm -hmm. well, are you still a model? No, not anymore. I found that it wasn't uh, intellectually stimulating. <laughs> well, some of my best friends are models. I mean, you could still be a model and have intellectual uh, satisfaction. You could be a cover girl for the National Geographic. <laughs> well, it wasn't much of a challenge. What sort of work do you do now, uh, Marilyn? I'm a dog trainer. A dog trainer? Yes. And that gives you intellectual satisfaction? <laughs> Oh, yes. Why is that? Uh, when a dog digs up a bone, does he tell you it comes from a dinosaur or something? No, but uh, breaking the language barrier between a dog and a human being is really an accomplishment. Yes, it certainly is. After all, some human beings... I find it much simpler to kick them. <laughs> Just uh, four-legged dogs, is those the only ones you concentrate on? Uh, yes. What about an old cocker spaniel? You wouldn't be... <laughs> Let's talk about uh, your work as a dog trainer. That sounds very interesting and most unusual for a young, attractive girl. Where do you, where do you train them? Well, I train dogs at their own home. I go to the home and uh, train the owner. To you train, train the, the owner? Yes. What does yes, he do, yes. get on his hands and knees and run around the room? <laughs> no, not quite. I, uh, 
I train the dog and uh, show the owner how to manipulate the leash and the correct uh, commands to give to the dog. Uh -huh. Have you been standing here all this time? I'm listening. Isn't that funny? I, I didn't even know you were here. <laughs> Never underestimate the power, the power of the Philadelphia Bulletin. <laughs> Where are you from originally, uh, Jim? I came from Australia. Oh, down under, huh? The I've Antipodes, been... huh? Yes, I've been here 15 years. I came from Sydney originally. Is that so? Played uh, professional golf here for 15 years. Mm -hmm. well, what are some of the important golf tournaments that you've won? I, I know you've won many of them. Well, I won the National uh, PGA Championship in 47. I won the Canadian Open twice. I've won five Australian championships and quite a few of the big money events around the country. I am uh, now at Lakeside Club here in oh. Hollywood. Oh, I see. Huh? And. Uh, Hope to have you over one day. Yeah. Well, do you ever play at Hillcrest? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, playing there next week. Oh, tournament? Eh? No, no, just a little friendly game. Oh. If you have a loose uh, dollar or two. I have a loose dollar, but I haven't got a loose moment. For <laughs> I play golf, too, you know. Uh, what is your handicap, uh, Jim? Well, as a pro, I don't have a handicap. Uh... Well, congratulations. How is it a tall, handsome man like you isn't married? Oh, I'm married. I have wives. You just said you didn't have a handicap. <laughs> well, I don't... Haven't you got the same handicap that 50 million other men have? Well, I don't consider my wife a handicap. No, you had a bad lie, Jim, but you recovered very nicely. <laughs> well, I'd like to go on talking to you two, but it's time to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,000, the first couple won $32.50, and the secret word is water. Now, you select the general information quiz, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. I think we better start a lead, you don't think? 80? Oh, that's kind of big. Uh, how about 50? 50? 50, Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. 50. 50. All right. What type of merchant indicates his trade by suspending three golden balls over his front door? Pawnbroker. Pawnbroker. Yeah, pawnbroker in the hock shop. That's right. <laughs> Now I have $150. What are you going to try this time? You have $150. Uh, $150. You want an 80, a 90, a 40, a 60? Oh, no, it's 100. 100? 100. Oh, gee, that's pretty high. Do you agree with that, Jim? Oh, I'm, I'm not very intellectual. 80, okay. 80. What is the monetary unit of Italy? Lira. Lira is right. Lira. Now I have $230. What do you want now, a little one or a big one? The big ones are harder, the little ones are easy. Let's go to 60, back to 60. 60? Pretty good. 60? 75? There is no 75. <laughs> no? All right. There's a 70 or an 80? You've 70. had the 80. 70. 70? Okay. What is the complete membership of the United States Senate? And I want the precise number. 48. How many it? members in the United States Senate? I think it's more than that. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, I say no, uh, 96, I believe it is. 96? 96 is right, huh? Eh? You now have $300. What are you going to go for? 60? What? 60, you, 60? Yeah. 60, Marilyn? Can we do what? Don't look at me with those big black eyes. <laughs> well, I think 60 would be safe. I'm Scotch, you know. See, well, I am too, but I'm <laughs> living dangerous. All right, 60? All right. How many justices are there on the Supreme Court, and I want the exact number? It must be 12. Okay. One answer. I don't know. I'm say 12. 12. Minutes. No, I'm sorry. It's nine, Jim. Mm. Well, well, you lost half good. your $300. You wind up with $150. Well, thanks and good luck from the DeSoto yeah. Plymouth dealers. Sorry you didn't win the last one. <laughs> So we invited some school teachers to the show tonight, and just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mrs. Evelyn Sorrells. Her partner, Mr. Floyd Humiston, has an unusual occupation. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to the DeSoto Plymouth Day. Let's say the secret word and divide $100. It's a common word, it's something you find around the house. Isn't she cute? <laughs> Evelyn Sorrell, huh? And Floyd uh, Humiston. Evelyn? I'll start with you, because you're a girl. You're a teacher, is that right? Yes. 
Oh, what a nice little teacher, huh? Where are you from, Teach? I teach at El Monte. Are you married? Yes, my husband goes to Caltech. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Floyd uh, Humerson, huh? Yes, sir. Mm. How old are you, uh, I'm Floyd? I'm uh, 24. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Fenneman says you have an unusual profession. Uh, what do you do, Floyd? Well, With I... a name like Floyd Humerson, I should guess you're a flute player with a philharmonic. <laughs> <laughs> what what well, do you do? Well, I uh, train I... lions, Groucho. You, what was that? I train lions. <clears throat> you mean the van and storage company? No, <laughs> the, the kind that eat meat. How long have you been doing this kind of work, Floyd? About half an hour? Uh, no. People say anything to get on this show. You know. <laughs> no. He trains lines. He probably sells pencil sharpeners. <laughs> uh, I could use one. My head has been coming to a point lately. Well, uh, my father was a lion trainer, and uh, he's... Uh, and uh, so I've been at it since I've been about eight years old. What did you do? Did you start training uh, mice first when you were a kid? <laughs> yeah, well, no, uh, just uh, being around them. Oh, they, you well, say your father was a lion tamer? Yeah. What happened? Did he collect the severance pay? No, he's retired. He's in the termite business now. <laughs> termites, he must... He must uh, cut quite a picture crawling under a house with a whip, a chair, and a loaded revolver. <laughs> <laughs> Where did he find these termites? On the lion? <laughs> uh, well, I, I don't actually know. I have, I've been worked with him a little bit. But oh, was your mother in, uh, in the animal training business? Too? No, she was uh, an aerialist uh, with the circus. Flying in the air? Yes, mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like a typical American family, doesn't it? Eh? He trains lions, his father chases termites, and his mother swings in the air. <laughs> That's what you call the ideal American home. Eh? Must be very restful around there around dinner time. Eh? Do you have any brothers and sisters, or does the lion do away with them? Eh? <laughs> yeah, I have a half uh, sister, don't you? You have a half sister? Yeah. <laughs> You mean you keep the lion in the house? Uh, yeah, I used to, yeah. Well, a half a sister's better than none, I guess. <laughs> Which half you got, do you remember? Well, uh, uh... Floyd, uh, you... <laughs> Floyd, you chew on a hunk of raw meat for a minute while I engage this beautiful uh. teacher here in repartee. How old are you, Evelyn? Twenty-four. Twenty-four? How long have you been teaching school? I'm starting on my uh, second year. Really? Huh? Well, aren't you? Aren't the children distracted when you walk in the schoolroom? No, I teach girls. Oh. Uh, what do you What do you teach these girls? I teach homemaking. Homemaking. Mm -hmm. What's that? Carpentry and things like that? <laughs> no, among other things, it's cooking and sewing. Oh, you mean you're the one who teaches these modern girls how to cook, eh? You're a worse menace than smog. <laughs> Floyd, let's get back to your lions. Uh, do you own any yourself? Uh, yes, I do, Groucho. I have a lion uh, named Fearless Fagin. Fearless Fosdick? Uh, no, Fearless Fagin. Where is Fearless uh, Fagin now? Uh, <clears throat> well, he's, uh, uh, he's at uh, home. I see. Is he pretty friendly around the house? Oh, yes, he's, he's very friendly. He lives in the house, and mm -hmm. he used to uh, sleep in bed with me. Uh, what happened? No, oh, my wife didn't like it. <laughs> well, I, I think there's some justification for that. I think you should have got her a lion, too. Huh? <laughs> now, where do you keep Phyllis Fosdick now? Uh, well, I, I keep him uh, up in Thousand Oaks, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, we have a lot of animal compounds and one thing or another up there. And uh, so... You it, keep him in a tree, you say? No, in the house. You said in the Thousand Oaks. Uh. Oh, well, well that's, it, has, uh, it has Thousand Oaks, supposedly. Oh. Now, let's say you might have cut one down. Well, what a... <laughs> Is 
Got anything like 29 pounds? Well, uh, I, I, I guess about the same, yeah. Well, how do your neighbors feel about this? Uh, don't they complain? Uh... No, they have elephants. <laughs> Well, that I can understand. Having an elephant in the house is logical, but having a lion, that's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you must live a rather interesting life, Floyd, with a lion in the house. What do people say when they ring the doorbell and the lion answers? Oh, well, uh, not too long ago, why, we have the Dutch doors in our house, you know, the kind that open up uh, one at a time. And uh, so... Uh, what do you mean, open up? <laughs> well, the... Uh, you know, it's, uh, Ken used to have in barns, you know, where they sawed them in half, you know, where the, the oh. bottom part opens up and then the top part opens up. This is like your half-sister, huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, anyway, so this Fuller Brushman, uh, he, uh, came up to sell me some brushes, and, uh, so I was talking to him, and so Fagin stuck his head out over the door and top of the door, and so... I still uh, have the man's brushes and briefcase. <laughs> well, uh, you think this brush salesman thought the lion was your wife? <laughs> Isn't your wife afraid of Fagin there? Uh? Oh, no, uh, she's not, a, no, she's not afraid of uh, me or Fagin or anybody else. I, I guess you have your wife pretty well trained by this time, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> well, women, women are the hardest things in the world to train. They're, they're, they're as, uh, they have the cunning of a tiger and the, and the stupidity of a lion and the, the uh, or, uh, well... No, let it go. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you know what I mean. Let it go. You're not going home tonight anyway. <laughs> well, I hate to break this conversation off. It's been very educational and extremely interesting. Oh, okay. However, it is time to play You Bet Your Life. In the race for the $1,000, the second couple is leading with $150. Now, you selected the animal kingdom, and remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, what do you want to start with? 10, 50, 60, all the way up to 100. 80. Eighty dollars. What do you call a young or nestling pigeon? Uh, uh let's say, uh, I ate some on toast one time, uh, <laughs> so, uh... I hope they agreed with you. Squab, squab. Squab is yeah, right, yeah. yes. You have one hundred eighty dollars. Now, what are you going to go for? Ninety. Ninety. What do you, what kind of an animal is a Flemish giant? Flemish giant. Uh, that's a fowl, if I'm not mistaken. Flemish, Flemish giant. Let's see. Guess. Uh, if you don't know. Well, <coughs> I'm sorry. It's a rabbit. Oh. Uh, yeah. Well, that's a shame. You lost half your hundred eighty. You have ninety dollars. All right. Now, what are you going to go for? Seventy. Seventy. What do you call the rodents that live in colonies on our American plains? They have a bark resembling that of a dog. Uh, that, uh, is your, uh, a prairie dog. That's right, a prairie dog is right. We now have $160. And is your last chance to be the other couples. What are you going to go for? 60. Huh? 60? 60. What are teals, golden eyes, and canvas backs? Teals, golden eyes, and canvas they're ducks. That's right, ducks is right. <laughs> and you wind up with $220. Thanks, and good luck to the soda Plymouth dealer. That means that Mrs. Sarles and Mr. Hummiston, with $220 in just one minute, get the chance of the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. <laughs> Sarles and Mr. Hummiston, all set for the DeSoto Plymouth $1,000 question. All right, here and we go you. for $1,000. I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you. Think carefully, and please, no help in the audience. One of the most famous cartoon characters of the last 40 years is the Timid Soul. Created by H.T. Webster. For $1,000, what is this painfully timid character's name? Walk it over. All right.
right, what is the answer you two have decided upon? I don't think I'll... Long, yes, it wouldn't be sad sack, would it? No, it's cash by milk toast. Oh. So that means the big question next week will be worth $1,500. Well, they lost the big money, but how much did they win the quiz, George? $220. Well, thanks, and congratulations to both of you and to all of our contestants on the show tonight. <laughs> Go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life on television. On radio every Wednesday night. And don't miss the big Chrysler Corporation TV show each week on another network. George Fenneman signing off with a message from the National Safety Council. You can't control the winter weather, but you can control your speed. <laughs>